Hold on, John. I think somebody put these here, not going through the court. I don't know. Uh, that's, um... Uh... One? How many of you is this your first commission meeting? Oh. Wonderful. Oh. Okay. I guess it's Dale's first. Ding, ding. Well, welcome. Thank you for coming to the City Commission of Coral Springs. We're happy to have you with us tonight. Uh, we're going to start with a call to order, led by our city clerk, Deborah. Microphone. Mayor Brook. Here. Commissioner Sarah. Present. Commissioner Vignola. Here. Commissioner Simmons. Here. Vice Mayor Carter. Present. City Manager Goodrum. Here. And City Attorney Hearn. Here. If you'd all please rise. I'm going to ask you to join me and our commission in a moment of silence in honor of Mayor Campbell, who passed away around this time last year prematurely. Thank you very much. We'll now have a few young people leading us in the pledge. So we have Eric, Liliana, and Jonathan. Yes, please stay standing. And Eric is a fourth grader, and Liliana is a first grader, and Jonathan is a first grader, all homeschooled. So we are ready when you are. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job. So I've got t-shirts for you. Okay, guys. Very nice to meet you, young man. And this is a shirt for you. Looks good. Might be a little big, but you'll grow into it. There you go. You're very welcome. And you are a young lady? Liliana. Liliana, so nice to meet you. And here's a shirt for you. Oh, we gave you a medium. Mm. <laughs> Had to get you a small. You guys ready to take a picture? Mm -hmm. Were you nervous doing the pledge? No. Fantastic. All right. I'm going to kneel over here to be next to you, OK? Ready? Good. All right, thank you guys. And the commission. All right, next we've got a recognition for those that were involved in the summer break spot. So how many of you, which of you would like to join me for this? All of us. All of you, <laughs> sounds great, <laughs> sounds great. Thank you. 
So uh, this first recognition is very special. We have a lot of people involved in supporting a great summer program, and I'll let the chief tell you about it. Chief? Thank you. First, I want to say congratulations again to you guys that did the pledge. Excellent job. Appreciate it. Uh, our summer break spot program helps uh, about 150 underprivileged kids during the six weeks uh, break during the summer. Uh, the program's largely staffed with police officers, most of them from the Youth Liaison uh, Unit, uh, other volunteers, and other community members. The program provides an opportunity for the children to receive individual tutoring, participate in elect, uh, educational programs, arts and crafts, sporting activities, and interact uh, inter, uh, with and, and be mo uh, mentored by uh, police officers and the other volunteers. Summer Break Spot program has been widely successful and has received national recognition. All of these uh, terrific accomplishments couldn't be done without the uh, generous support of our sponsors. And today, I uh, would like to represent or have uh, representatives from uh, each one coming up. And I know some of them may not be here yet, so I'm going to try and go out of order. Is there anybody from, uh, I know there's somebody here, the principal from uh, James S. Hunt Elementary? We also have the past principal here. How have you been? And I'd like to present you guys with this token of our appreciation. And if we could, we'd like to get a photo. program is run out of their school and they're, they're generous to open up their doors and, and they really give us free run of the place. Would you like to say anything? Okay. Put you on the spot here. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I actually, my predecessor um, allowed the city of Coral Springs to come and do an amazing program for our boys and girls. This is an opportunity that many of our students don't have in order to participate in a safe environment. Um, it's educational, it's safe, um, they teach them respect and honor. So I appreciate all that you all do for them and, and I look forward to this continued partnership. <laughs> well, no, I, again, thank you so much to the City of Coral Springs. Um, it has been a pleasure for the past two years to have been and worked with um, my S the SRO, Michelle, um, Officer Michelle Martin, and she and I with all of the other SROs, uh, capitalists, Sarge Capitalists, um, are, it's, it really was a very well-run oiled machine and I got to know and meet a lot of wonderful SROs within the city and I just thank them for helping nourish 150 students every summer and it was a great time and so all the best of luck and I know it will continue to be a great program. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. Can we give them a round of applause? Okay, and if we could have the representatives from uh, off-lease only. And I'd like to present you with this. And, oh, photo. <laughs> Would you care to say something? Oh. Okay, it's always good when you're running late and you get to talk. Um, I want to say something about this program and, and actually how Awfully Solely became involved because we are a part, I'm actually a, a Coral Springs resident and my children go to school here in Coral Springs and I'm a part of the Education Commission. Um, I, we have a parent advisory group that we meet monthly um, with Mr. Road Commissioner Bignola and we have various members of all of our forces there and they have discussed this, uh, this particular camp for the last few years 
and it seemed like such a great opportunity. And even though our store is actually in North Lauderdale, we feel very much a part of the Coral Springs community, and we felt it was uh, something of our duty and as a good neighbor to, to be a part of it. And so we were provided the opportunity to help underwrite a large part of it, I think, um, including the sharks and the food. And we, we kind of understood it from a distance that, okay, it's money, this is great, we're helping somebody. But then we had the opportunity to come visit the, uh, the camp and the students. And it was amazing. It was really a little bit of a life-altering experience to watch the things that these kids were doing, and more importantly, the people who serve our community and the things that they were doing on their own time. Um, these children were energetic, they were engaged, they were excited, and most importantly, they were happy. And they were happy with every one of you. And to see each one of you, and I see so many of the faces that I saw there and the things that they were doing, it just reaffirms to me that we live in one of the best cities, uh, probably in the United States, and the amount of stuff that, that our community gives back. So I want to say thank you to all of you for the things that you do for all of us. Um, and we will definitely be helping you again in the future. Well, thank you for your generous help. A round of applause. We could have five serve come up, formerly first data. There might be a few. Yeah. <laughs> Coming along. We'll make Thank room you. for you. Well, don't don't anybody move. Uh, Ainsworth, could you come? Yeah, yeah, please. Please, yeah, let's get one here. Sure, sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, well, let's take the picture first. Right, well, so I'll, I'll say something real quick. It's, um, uh, a privilege and an honor to be associated with this program. We've been involved, I want to say, for at least the last four or five years in delivering book bags. And one of the good things about the program is all of these 150 kids that come for the summer program get a book bag ready with all of the supplies they need in order to start the school year and start the school year successfully. Um, in order to make that happen, it takes a lot of effort. Um, if I serve Formerly First Data has been a member of this community for well over 20 years, and um, uh, it takes all of our employees, all of our employee resource groups, which is what we have represented here, um, to put together and get all of those book bags. So it's not one person doing it. Um, a lot of times you may not have employees that can fill all of uh, the needs for one student, but they can buy pens, they can buy uh, notebooks, and we've got people that put all of those things together to make it happen. So, um, again, we're honored. To, we, we thank you guys for recognizing us, but um, we do also see the, the merits of this program and trying to be a good citizen within this community. Um, I mentioned this a few months ago when we did the... Um, the International Day of Peace that, um, you know, we've been a member of this community. The, the name itself um, may have changed on the sign that hangs outside of Coral Ridge Drive, but our commitment to this community is still the same. So thank you very much. And, and I, would, I would like to add that, you know, when, when the, the last day when they give out the book bags, they're, they're so heavy, I thought I was going to have to charge him with <laughs> child abuse. Uh, for the poor kids that, that had to carry them home. So uh, we really do appreciate the support. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
our, our next sponsorship or, or our own Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, committee. Good afternoon, everybody. No, thanks for being here, first of all. And the first thing that I want to say is that we are so happy and proud to be a part of this. Thank you guys for allowing us to support this. Uh, another thing that I want to say that's really, really important is that there's so many images on TV. We get to see so many things and so much stuff that comes at us from so many different directions. Some of it not so good. But this is the kind of thing that we actually should see. It, we should see this. We should see what people uh, in uniform are actually doing things to, to actually make this community a better place. We appreciate what you do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for making a difference. I've been very fortunate that I've been allowed to uh, read books to the students at least for the last two summers. I wasn't able to do it this summer. If you, if you don't know what it is, you got to see it. You got to see these underprivileged kids all coming to the school, playing basketball and activities with the police department. It's it's such a it's such a great vibe, and and, and the chair put it exactly right. You you don't see enough of this on TV. This is something spectacular, and we're very proud of our police department. And do we have a representative from First Church of Coral Springs? I was told they were running late. I'm not sure. All right. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of First Church, who's been here for 50 years, it should always be a privilege and an inspiration to get outside the home, the box, the church building, and be with each other as neighbors. So yeah, we are part of helping children and just persons that in a sense we may say they're underprivileged, but nobody, nobody lacks drive and should lack heart and should lack love and should lack inspiration and hope and faith, correct? So we do those things because we believe that everybody can make a difference in the world. So may we continue to do that. Thanks for always keeping us safe and being part of this community. Thank you. Okay, and th those are our gold level sponsors. I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that, you know, we have a lot of other sponsors. In fact, one of them sitting here in the audience, I'd like you to give them a round of applause. Uh, the Kiwanis Club is a sponsor. Mary Boston, and her people are here. You know, and, and to all of our sponsors, look, on behalf of the men, men and women of the Coral Springs Police Department, our community, and especially the kids that, that you help, uh, we want to thank you all from the bottom of our heart. We really appreciate it. Could not be done without you. So thank you for your support. We really do appreciate it.
it is great to still have so many people left in the room. And the Boy Scout troop that's here is at 497. Welcome to Troop 497. Good to have you here and your families. So our next recognition is the Kiwanis Club donation to Fire and Police Explorers. So Kiwanis Club, if you'd come on up. And uh, we're recognizing a donation from them that they'll present to the Coral Springs Fire Explorers and the Coral Springs Police Explorers. Come on over. So the Qantas Club of Coral Springs has been a part of the community since 1973. And while our mission is serving the children of the world, there's no better way than helping to build a wonderful community and to keep everybody safe. So we're thrilled and honored every year to support you guys as much as we can. Um, and we do it in lots of different ways from our police recognition um, every year that we're, we love having you guys at. Um, Miss Mary runs Safety Town for us in the summer, um, which is a fabulous program for our students. Of course, supporting all of our up and coming firefighters and police officers behind me. I think the group's getting bigger every year. <laughs> um, and sponsoring the Break Spot program and so many other things that we do in the community. So we're very pleased to offer both the explorers um, a gift of $500 this year. Uh, would any of you like to share your experience? Anyone want to step up? I'll hand the mic to you. Perfect. Oh, So my name is Priscilla. Um, I'm the captain for the Police Explorers. Um, I've been in the Police Explorers since 2016 or 2017. We haven't found that out yet. Um, so yeah, it's been an amazing um, program. I mean, I love each and everybody over here. Uh, we do build it into, <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I haven't really met you guys, but you know. But um, this program is just amazing. Um, for a lot of parents out there, if your kids want to join stuff like this, 100% put them in. It's more than just learning about how your life is going to be eventually, like your future. But if you ask any of us, we're all a family here. And even the police officers, we're all a family here. So when they said that they got your back, they got your back and no matter what. Um, this program has helped me a lot. Um, I'm, I just got hired now as a TAI. So this program gave me this, the boost to get this position. So I just, I would give anything to this post. So yeah. So on, on behalf of our commission, I just want to thank uh, all of the explorers for your commitment to the program and your commitment to our community, your commitment to one another. Uh, it's really a, a pleasure to have you up here and uh, we're very, very grateful to have you be a part of us. And 
and we appreciate everything you're about to do in your future for our community. Thank you. And I'm going to give this to Commissioner Vignola. Well, honestly, that's my cousin over there, Tyler, so I have to <laughs> give him a little. When you, all, when you all go down over there, if you can come over here so I can get a photo with you, I'd appreciate it, all right? All right. W one more picture. We're good? All right, we did the picture. Well, who are you presenting the check to? Somebody's got to receive the check. Who wants the real checks? Who's the recipient? We got two recipients here? Because they've got to hold the check for the next picture. Next one is the Commission Connection Group. Okay. And I'm going to help on this one. Great. I have one right over my shoulder. I have one behind. He should get a photo of me. It's great if they all want to stay down because it's our first time. You can all stay down. Commission Connection. Nice to meet you. Okay, we have uh, one more recognition before an amazing proclamation for an amazing woman. Uh, our next recognition is to recognize the students that have participated in the first ever Commission Connection. Dale, will you share a little bit more? Sure, Mayor. Um, I'd love to share a little bit more. Tonight we made history. Uh, we decided to establish a new program for youth who are interested in learning about our community, our government, and the way we operate here in the city. So we put a process together and created an online registration for middle and high school students, and we had a great response. Uh, it's a small, uh, intimate experience, and tonight was our first session. So it's kind of a um, mini government academy for students. And so our first six students came tonight, five actually attended, and we want to recognize them and thank them for going through the process. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call them up one at a time. Um, Jimmy Bernatek, homeschool student. Jimmy. Just shake their hand. <laughs> okay, Lily Bernatek, homeschool student. Anna Maris Montez, St. Andrew Catholic School. <laughs> Alicia Matawala, FAU High School. And lastly, Gabrielle Prager, Coral Springs High School.
student, the students had each an opportunity to learn about our past, where our city came from, our present, and of course our future, where we're going. It's called the Commission Connection because they get 15 minutes of a Q&A private time with one of our elected officials where they get to meet them, learn about them, ask questions, and uh, we're going to keep doing this every month for the rest of the year pretty much. So thank you all for being here tonight. So at this time, uh, I'd like to call up the family of Lisa Bocard, including former Mayor Vince Bocard, to recognize Vince's sister, Lisa Bocard. And I'm going to share some information and we'll present this proclamation. Yes, to give them a round of applause. I'm going to share some information, uh, and personally, uh, so I know Lisa a long time, Vince's family to me, and his family is my family. Uh, Vince and I served together for many years on the council and did a lot of great things together, and his sister uh, was a pioneer, a leader, a big heart in our community who never ceased to give back to our community and use what she learned and how she coped with her breast cancer that began in 1991. Uh, unfortunately, she passed away just a few months ago. But uh, Lisa was a fighter. Um, Lisa just continued to give and give and give to the community. And they began a breast cancer foundation in honor of Lisa. And I'll share with you some information. She had a compassion and commitment to help prevent breast cancer and wanted to make a difference in women's lives. She was a driving force behind the Lisa Bocard Breast Cancer Fund and her determination to thrive was matched only by her desire to protect other women from suffering with breast cancer. It was founded in 2003 by my friend Vince and his wife Terry, who uh, unfortunately is occupied making a living tonight, otherwise she'd be here. And the mission is to provide screenings, mammograms, and other diagnostic breast care uh, for women in the community who are otherwise unable to afford this life-saving treatment. Her breast cancer advocacy spanned nearly 30 years, during which she served as a spokeswoman for the Lisa Bocard Breast Cancer Fund, co-founded the Florida Breast Cancer Coalition, and participated in the American Cancer Society and the National Breast Cancer Coalition. Her positive spirit, she embodied love, compassion, empathy for others, and she still inspires me and so many others in our community to this day in, in fighting whatever we may be going through. And in recognition to her recent passing in June, our commission felt that it was appropriate in her honor to have this be proclaimed Breast Cancer Awareness Month and to proclaim October 16, October, what's today? 16, thank goodness, as Lisa Bocard Day. So if you'll give a round of applause, we appreciate it. Would you like to say some words? So Vince is gonna say some words and then uh, Larry will uh, highlight the proclamation. Thank you, Mayor and Commission, appreciate the the proclamation, I appreciate the honor, I appreciate you recognizing Lisa. Lisa truly loved the city of Coral Springs and she loved the women of Broward County and she truly gave her heart and soul uh, and her body uh, to uh, 
giving back to others, which is so important. You heard a lot of that tonight. And uh, I'd like to recognize a few other people, if I may. This is my mother, Jean, 96, and still with us. <laughs> this is Sophia, my daughter, who 11 years ago I was sitting right up here and I made the announcement. Here she is today. <laughs> And, and without the help of Broward Health, the Lisa Bocard Breast Cancer Fund would not survive. And I want to recognize um, Jared Smith, the CEO of Coral Springs, Broward North Coral Springs. I'd like to recognize Claudio, who is my sister's fiance, and, and Barbara, who was very, very close, like a sister with Lisa, and they worked hand in hand uh, to make the fund successful. Um, and Lisa is not here with, oh, my, you want to say something, Mom? No. Lisa's not here to be with us, but I know she's here in spirit, and I know she'd be truly honored by this, but at the same time, she'd be humbled. She's just the kind of person that she was. I want to thank the city of Coral Springs, and Mayor, thank you so much uh, for the uh, recognition. And uh, we usually have a 5K half marathon race every year to raise money for the foundation. Uh, we're going to postpone it this year, and it's going to be October 3rd of 2020. Uh, if anybody would like to get involved, please uh, give us a call at 954-344-4433. Uh, Love to... 3344? Sorry, okay. 3344. <laughs> Love to have the help. Let's make it successful. Last night we had the Mad Hatter Tea Party. What I'm getting at is we're trying to continue the legacy of Lisa, and this is what she asked us to do, to continue the foundation and keep helping women in Broward. We had the Mad Tea Party last night, which tipped us over $800,000 so far to date. So our goal is a million dollars. So thank you so much and appreciate it. You're welcome. Larry is going to read the proclamation. This is a special proclamation uh, for Lisa Bocard Day. After beginning her battle with cancer in 1991 at the age of 29, Lisa made the choice to fight this devastating disease. Her fight inspired many others in our community, especially as she used her strength to make a difference in women's lives as the driving force behind the Lisa Bocard Breast Cancer Fund. The fund has enabled thousands of women to seek the appropriate testing and screening and to ensure more women survive every day. I believe as of a few years ago, we, you had broken over 100 people uh, in our community found out they had breast cancer because of the fund. Um, that would not have been able to afford the screenings without it. So, saving lives. I mean, I, I really cannot tell you how amazing Lisa was. Um, even after her passing in June of 2019, Lisa's positive spirit continues to inspire us each day and will do so for many years to come. Therefore, we, the City Commissioner of Coral Springs, Florida, proclaim October 16, 2019 as Lisa Bogart Day.
Well, that was very nice. Uh, it's wonderful to uh, recognize good people and good activities, and I'm so glad that we got to proclaim today in Lisa's honor. She really did so much for our community and still inspires me. And thank you, team, for joining me for all of that. That was wonderful. I appreciate it. Our next uh, session in the agenda is our public comment, and we'll hear from the first signed speaker. But I will preface, uh, as you're coming up, we may or may not respond to you directly from your commentary. And if you want to hear potentially responses from us, please wait until commission comment. Uh, and it may be addressed by the city manager's office or one of his delegates. delegates. Uh, so don't feel bad if we don't necessarily respond to what you share with us. But we're happy to have you here and our first speaker. Mayor, I have eight signed speakers. Awesome. The first three, Ellen, Elena Schnell. Elena Schnell. Is Elena here? Ellen? This is Elena, Elena Schnell. Schnell. <laughs> the next is Jada Washington. Oh, is it Evan Snow? No. Okay. No, that's later on. Because <laughs> uh, I see Evan there. The next is Jada Washington Booth, and um, don't give me your home address. Yeah, you can come up to the mic. And welcome. Good, af good evening to all of the uh, commission. Um, please bear with my daughter. Um, she hasn't been feeling her best, but um, she's going to say just a quick presentation to you. Very welcome, Jada. <coughs> good evening. My name is Jada Washington Booth sixth grade student at Stargast Springs Middle School. I am here to speak about chess in the city of Coral Springs. Since kindergarten, I have been playing chess at my previous school and the Mayor's Chess Challenge throughout Broward County. I was able to play chess Northwest Regional Library and at Coral Springs High School, along with Mullen Park. <coughs> Now, five years later, there are barely any events for students, especially middle school students and high school students to play chess. Many of the programs and funding have been removed for students like me to play chess in Coral Springs. I am asking the city of Coral Springs to bring funding to purchase chess sets, medals for chess tournaments, and medals for students who attend the Mayor's Chess Challenge like in previous years. The reason why I support is because it has given me so many opportunities. For instance, I have been on honor roll since I started elementary. It has served me well as a member of state championship robotics team, coding, critical thinking, and more. Most of all, it has helped me work with Mayor Chess Challenge, especially Mayor Mike, Jay Ryan, Mayor of Sunrise, Parkland, Cooper City, Weston, Tamarack, Pembroke Pines, Waterhill, and Miramar. As the Broward County Chess Queen Ambassador, I am asking for you to consider funding programs again in Coral Springs, the city I have lived in in 11 years past. In closing, I would like to thank Commissioner Joshua Simmons for meeting with me in June 2019, my principal, Mr. James Cecil, Sawgrass Springs Middle, my mom and dad, Major Collins, my grandparents, and my teachers from Sawgrass Springs, my pastors, Bishop Henry Fernandez, and the Faith Center Ministries, and the friends who have supported me. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> Jada, you're you're very well spoken and obviously already a success. And I'm sorry I missed you the other day because I was there with my grandson for lunch. So I would have loved to have met you, but it's nice to meet you this evening. And I think Commissioner Simmons would like to say a couple of words. Yes, keep uh, up the good work. Jada, thank you for uh, coming uh, again to uh, uh, the city hall here and, and speaking again on this issue. Um, I, I will say that you know we have spent the last two days as a as a, as a body working on plans for the future of Coral Springs. And um, some of the, the items that we did talk about was uh, working some kind of chess plan. And so um, I can't necessarily tell you how exactly it's going to look or, or when or the hows, but I want you to know that your advocacy uh, was heard and it is being discussed 
uh, by this body. So, um, you know, stay tuned and see what, what we can uh, come up with if we are able to get this done. So and thank I, you. And I, thank you. And I do believe there is a mayor's chess challenge in Coral Springs in January. I think it's January 18th. February 18th. January 18th. Yeah, so we'll be posting about that. Okay. Thank you, Jaden. Nice Thank to meet you. you. And our next speaker. I shouldn't. <coughs> Would you like to say, this is Ann Jeanette Washington Collins. Yes, good evening. Um, good evening. My daughter eloquently stated, I'm here for personal reasons um, to honor the legacy of the late Mayor Skip Ryan, excuse me, Skip Campbell, I'm saying Mike Ryan, Skip Campbell, who uh, was an advocate for chess in this city. So again, um, on behalf of my daughter, who spoke um, to the students uh, here and residents here, we would like to uh, again appeal to the uh, commission board to bring more programs for chess, um, either to um, events or just um, provide funding for it. I know Commissioner Simmons is going to do that, but again, we're appealing to all of the others um, that have done it. I've seen uh, Vice Mayor Joy Carter at some of our events previously, thank you. But um, to bring this more to the forefront of the city and what it has done, um, both I'm an educator here in Broward County Schools um, for the past 27 years, what it has done for my daughter and what it can do for the community um, partnering and looking at some of the programs throughout Broward County that have worked successfully. So that's why I'm here. Thank you. Nice to have you with us. You're Thanks. welcome. The next speaker is Rory Renzi. My address? Or we need your address, yeah. yeah. Uh, 5342 Northwest 116th Avenue. In welcome, Rory. Hello. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, and City staff. My name is Rory Renzi. I am a junior at New College of Florida. I'm also a lifelong resident of Coral Springs and a graduate of Coral Springs Charter. Um, I come before all of you this evening at home on fall break from college because um, I think it's important to bring forth a couple of issues that I'm deeply passionate about and still learning about. So on September 20th, I joined with millions of others worldwide in striking against climate inaction um, with me and my friends standing proudly on the bay in Sarasota. In my environmental economics class, the question of whether or not government is up to the job of building a cleaner world is always running through my head. Last night, three hours went by and not one question about climate action was asked in the debate for the Democratic nominee for president. Deepening democracy and fighting climate change are the two biggest issues my generation faces, existential issues that are inherently intertwined. I ask that they become central to this city's plans for how it sees its role in the lives of all of its residents. Local governments can act as the core of good governance when it comes to these issues. While I don't want to stand up here and pretend that Coral Springs can pass a Green New Deal or radically change the way it can govern overnight, I ask you to think and act boldly. The state of Florida has thought of every which way possible to restrict home rule, so we must think outside the box. Let's make sure we are a regional leader in attacking issues we need to start fighting now. Let's make sure all new buildings in the city are carbon neutral. Let's plan to create car-free zones in our downtown's redevelopment and make sure that it, that area is also affordable for everyone, not just those with ample means. This is a municipal government of, for, and by the people, so involve the people in participatory action. Let's examine how our utilities function and who benefits from their structure. Let's think about what kind of example the city sets based on who it does business with. Let's promote renewable electricity across the city and entice sustainable local business. Let's partner with other cities and Broward County to strengthen our capabilities. Let's examine the state statutes to the letter and find wiggle room to make a change, even if we know the state of Florida will not like it. All I ask for is bold, big, outside the box thinking, because business as usual will not solve these issues. Together, we can set an example with Coral Springs as the city in Broward that is clean and prosperous. After all, the issues of accountability, democracy, and climate action are issues that affect all of us. Please continue to educate yourselves and to set an example for this great city. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Evan, next, next speaker. Evan Snow. And Rory, that was very articulate. Good job. Yes. All right. Welcome, Evan. Glad to be here. Uh, so my name is Evan Snow. I might be the second proudest Coral Springs native behind Dan Daly. Um, 
I'm the co-founder of Choose 954, which is a social movement to cultivate culture and community here in Broward County, keeping people in the know with all the great things going on, primarily with the arts, culture, and community building space in an effort to make this a better place to live and not just a better place to vacation. Um, we've started a bunch of initiatives, primarily highlighting the arts and culture and providing a lot of support for artists. Uh, we produce the signature annual art event in Broward County, Art Fort Lauderdale, the Art Fair on the Water, Fort Lauderdale Art and Design Week, and we're behind a lot of other various initiatives as well. Uh, but the one that I wanted to share with you guys, which isn't, um, which Coral Springs isn't uh, uh, absent from, there's two main issues that artists and, and really the community kept, uh, kept coming to us with. One, there's a lack of affordable artist studio spaces for artists to be able to create. If artists aren't able to create, they have to go other places to pursue their craft, creative outlet, passion, or profession. Yet, there's an abundance in every city of vacant commercial real estate. And we know that cities don't like vacant space if it's blighted, if it's dilapidated, or if it's pre-construction, if it's pre-leased, nobody likes to see vacant space. So we, uh, being creative problem solvers, community builders, creative entrepreneurs, and marketers, came up with an, an initiative called Zero Empty Spaces, where we're activating vacant commercial real estate on short-term, 30-day renewable, flex, uh, flex lease term basis to uh, make it available to artists at $2 per square foot, inclusive of the water, the electricity, and general liability insurance, which we provide. We act as one point of contact for owners and developers, uh, so the owners don't have to deal with the artists, which isn't always the funnest thing to do, but w this is something that I do day in and day out. Um, obviously, this helps with walkability. It helps with putting feet in the street. It helps from the real estate perspective when somebody wants to see a property, if the property is already activated, you don't have to chase down a leasing agent. Um, we've been successful in launching uh, locations in Fort Lauderdale off of Las Olas with the Las Olas Company, in downtown Hollywood with help from the Hollywood CRA who we're partners with, and off of Galt Ocean Drive, technically in Fort Lauderdale, but off of Oakland Park and A1A. We work with the uh, city of Fort Lauderdale's nighttime economy mayor, uh, manager, Sarah Spurlock, uh, various city uh, employees through various uh, Coconut Creek, Hollywood, and throughout. And they like it because obviously it's putting feet in the street, it's doing something good, it's, provide, it's a place-making initiative. Um, our opening event on the Los Olas location had almost 1,000 people come out for the opening of an artist studio space. I can't say that would have been the same if it was a gallery opening, but it's something new, it's something exciting, and there's a, a, a buzz around um, obviously having the Wynwood effect having take place in Miami, and having seen art transform communities from Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and Soho to Asheville, North Carolina, um, this place, not my term, has been considered a cultural wasteland for a long time, and I'm working very dil diligently to change that by creating places for artists to be able to create and hopefully creating Broward County as a destination, as one of the most affordable destinations for artists to be able to pursue their craft and Thank creative you. So outlet. what's the name of your organization? It's called Evan? Zero Empty Spaces. May I have your address, please, clerk. for the record? Yes. Into the microphone, please. 5183 Northwest 66 Lane, Coral Springs, Florida, 33067. And I just have one more question. Did you say in Fort Lauderdale you chatted with a nighttime economy manager? Correct, and that's uh, very similar to the nightmare, something that you might have seen in like Amsterdam and in Europe. The city of Fort Lauderdale recently implemented. She acts as a liaison between the stakeholders, the business owners, and the participants of the nighttime community, promotes safety, and um, helps out with a lot of the logistical elements. It's probably more prevalent in a city like Fort Lauderdale, okay. but it- uh, you never know. Yeah, you never well, know. thank you, Evan, for being here. Thank you, guys. Our next speaker is Nancy Mateer, followed by Tundra King. Hi, welcome, Nancy. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Nancy Mateer, and I live at 9833 Northwest 54th Place, Coral Springs, Florida. Um, <clears throat> good evening, members of Coral Springs Commission. My name is Nancy Mateer, and I'm a lifelong resident of Coral Springs. I am here today because I want to take the opportunity to urge the Coral Springs Commission to ensure that there are strong goals for energy efficiency and solar. 
Energy efficiency to me means a better quality of life for all of us. We have once and an every five year opportunity to reset energy conservation goals for Florida's largest utilities. Higher goals means a broader scale of energy efficiency programs provided to customers. Efficiency programs are especially important to low to moderate income cu customers. Florida customers pay the eighth highest energy bills in the nation, leaving customers who are low income for, or fixed income struggling to pay their bills. Marginalized customers pay a disproportionate share of their income for energy, creating an energy burden, which is roadblock to moving out of economic hardships and places families at greater risk of negative health effects and increased stress. Florida is ground zero for climate change and utilities should take advantage of energy efficiency to not only save us money, but also remove the incentives to build new costly dirty power plants that will worsen the impacts of climate change in our state. Today I am asking you for asking the commission to adopt a resolution urging the Florida Public Service Commission to require meaningful energy conservation goals, investment in energy efficiency programs to assist low moderate income households, and sharing of consumption data by the electric utilities during the 2019 Florida Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act processing. Broward and Miami-Dade County has already passed a resolution along as Miramar, Boca Raton, Hallandale, Miami Beach, Coral Gables, as well as Largo, St. Pete, Sarasota. Thank you, Commission, for your time. Thank you very much, Nancy. Next speaker, Deborah. On her way, Tundra King. Welcome. Welcome, good evening, Commission. I bring you greetings from the North Broward County Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And I wanted to just come to share to let you know some of the amazing things um, that the sorority has done and continues to do. We serve eight cities in North Broward County, um, everything that's north of Commercial Boulevard. And I do want you to be aware that you are one of our cities that we serve. So we have numerous programs that we certainly pride ourselves on. Um, the sorority uh, is a national organization comprised of over 200 college educated women and our platform certainly is public service. We have programs um, called the GEMS, the Academy, Embody is one of our boys program that we recently just rolled out and we want to just join forces with you with some of the great things that we're doing. I saw you had your police explorers up here in your um, police uh, fire academy. I am a retired police captain, so that's something that's very dear to my heart. I supervised the school resource and police explorers for many years. So I was glad to see them and elated that we still have young people that are interested in law enforcement because we have kind of been getting a bad rap these days. If you have a TV, you know what I'm referring to. So we would just want to come to maybe I can um, at some point sit down with some of you or sit down with whoever may serve your youth service programs or senior citizens. We do a lot of things for senior citizens. We have wills and trust class. We're just busy all over the community um, and we let nothing stop us. This year we're tasked with, uh, I am as a social action chair, tasked with um, getting people out to be familiar with the census. And we know that's gonna be a very difficult task, but we want to get into some of those areas where we have low voter turnout and people that may not come to your commission meeting. So we want to knock on doors and shake some trees to get people to get out and get involved because you can't do this work alone and neither can we. So I'm certainly um, soliciting your assistance and I hope that we can have a partnership with the city of Coral Springs um, because we do serve a lot of your students in our program and in May we give away numerous scholarships um, to the North Broward County area. So again, my name is Tundra King. I'm a resident of Pompano Beach and I'm sure my, glad, my mayor is glad that I'm not at commission meeting tonight <laughs> or next week um, because I love the city and I have a passion for people and I have a passion for the people that are the least, the lost and the left out as my pastor likes to say. So I hope you give us an opportunity to share with you um, and to assist you in some of the amazing work that you're already doing. Thank you for your time. You're welcome, how, thank you. How do we reach you? This, uh, this, this man of Omega Sci-Fi will say it's always wonderful to see a, a devastating lady of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much, I appreciate how, how it. How do we reach you? <laughs> I'm sorry? How do we reach you? Um, I'd be glad to, 
Okay. Give someone my phone number, and as a retiree, I guess I can add, um, Commissioner, another thing to my list is that, um, like I said, there are many programs that we do and that you do as well, but we'd love to have that, that partnership with you. Thank and you, I, sir. I'd be happy to sit with you. I have office hours this Friday and next Friday, and all of us have different office hours at different times. So thank you for being here. I will here. adjust my schedule and, and be glad to um, sit down with you with some of my other sorority sisters. Very nice. Thank, thank you, you for your in. time. There are no other signed speakers. Okay, would anyone else like to be heard? Yes, please come on up. Let us know your name and your address, so long as you're over 18. Uh, the the, the city address. clerk will still need you on the record. Yeah, so you can use the business address. Business address is perfect. You can use your business address, yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, my name is Simone Edwards. I'm with Department of Veteran Affairs. I'm at 9800 West Commercial Boulevard. And I actually came today, I'm a Coral Springs resident, but I met Mayor Brooke in a professional manner. I'm part of the Broad Mental Health Summit Planning Committee. I hosted a PTSD session and he attended our session. So I was excited to see my own city mayor and he said maybe it'd be nice to come by at least so the commission could know right there in our sister city, we have our VA clinic. I work in mental health with our high risk veterans. I'll gladly leave my card if any of our commissioners or mayor or um, come across any veterans in need, you have a contact at the VA, you can feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to help. Great. Thank and you for and we'd lo Thank you. Thank you for making that offer. And we'd love to have you join us for our Veterans Day ceremony on November 11th at 10 a.m. at Veterans Park. Oh, perfect. So thank if you, you give much. us your card, I'll make sure I send you a personal invitation. Ah, thank too. you very much. Thank you for your time. It should be at what time? It should be 11. Yeah, no, it's at 10 a.m. So if somebody can just double check, but I've got seven invitations for 10 a.m. I've accepted only three of them. <laughs> Would anybody else from the public like to be heard? Okay, seeing none, public comment is closed. We're on to public hearings, <coughs> special meeting announcements. The first is a conditional use <coughs> approval for Knox Servicing, LLC. Thank you, Mayor. This is a request to approve petition of Knox Servicing, LLC for conditional use approval in accordance with section 250568, conditional uses of the Land Development Code for a medical marijuana dispensing facility, Fluent, within the Community Business B2 Zoning District, located at 1406 University Drive, legally describes as lots 15-17, and portions of lots 14 and 18, Block H, Coral Springs University Drive, subdivision edition number one, and authorized city attorney's office to draft an order approving CA 19-0003, and adopt said orders, request to hold public hearing. The quasi-judicial uh, mayor was waived um, the, any affected parties, uh, within, which is th any of those within 400 feet were noticed. Uh, there may be some here that are here to speak but did not sign up uh, under the quasi-judicial and obviously they are, are, are here to be given their opportunity and due process to speak and, and provide their thoughts. As a request to approve, authorize and adopt, we'll start with staff, we'll go to the petitioner, then if you'd open up to uh, the public mayor. Great. Hi, Julie. Hi, good evening, everyone. So as the uh, city attorney mentioned, the, the request before you this evening is a conditional use for the city's first medical mar marijuana dispensing facility. The applicant is Knox Servicing. The site is zone B2, which is why we're here. Some of the locations um, that allow for medical marijuana or dispensing facilities within the city are allowed by right. However, within the B2 or community business zoning district, it does require conditional use approval from you all in order for them to operate. Specifically, this location is, is 1400 to 1410 University Drive. It's a little over an acre in size. The building itself is uh, about 11,500 square feet. Um, it was the former location of a mattress store right in between Zona Fresca and the vitamin shop that's there, um, right on University just north of Sample, uh, of Shadow, excuse me. Um, for the um, parents in the room, uh, Chick-fil-A is there on the corner, um, and, and there's an office building across the street. Um, the surrounding uses on the north, the south, and the east are all B2, also community vis business, a uh, range of uses from office to restaurant, a gas station, as well as additional retail there on the south. Kind of county corner to the site, again to the south, is uh, University of Maple Hood Townhomes, so those are zoned RM15, and then to the rear are, are various duplexes zoned RD8. We did send out 91 notifications of, for this property as well, just to give you an idea of how many, how many properties are within that 400 feet. 
just for those who may not have, have been here at the time, as well as for those in the audience, just kind of getting us how we got here. In um, November of 2016, you may remember that uh, voters in the state of Florida uh, approved Amendment 2 by more than 70% to allow medical marijuana, the use of medical marijuana, as, as well as uh, the cultivation, dispensing of the product within the state. In anticipation of the regulations that the state was going to adopt, however, not knowing what those were going to be yet, the City Commission adopted a moratorium in December of 2016, which was extended until January of 2018. In the meantime, the state adopted the regulations. Um, probably one of the most impactful portions of that was that we had to treat, have to treat these facilities similar to pharmacies. Just as pharmacy is, that's how it needs to be in our code. So you may remember that was kind of what led us into recommending a prohibition on these uses. Later on, the commission came back and said they wanted to adopt an ordinance and have staff bring forward recommendations to allow these types of facilities within the city, which was adopted in April of this year. Now, as I mentioned, we did include in the ordinance that these uses be allowed by right in districts such as the medical center. However, in districts such as the community business, we did recommend condition, the, the conditional use be required so that we can make sure that the certain safeguards that these places operate just as we need them to be within our city. So I'm just gonna go through those quickly here, just so that as I go through more specifics on this site, you can see how it relates back to the conditions that are in the code. And these are, all con these are included on pages, I believe, four and five of staff's memo, in case you wanna see them later on. The first being that consumption or administration of the drugs not be ha happen on site. Some of these are city uh, conditions that we included as part of our ordinance. Others are state requirements that we still thought were important enough that we wanted to reiterate them in our ordinance as well. So I have on the end there which ones were um, city recommendations and then others that came from the state law. There'd be sufficient exterior lighting, both for the building itself as well as for the parking lot that there be a secure room, vault, or safe for the product, that an alcohol and drug-free workplace policy be instituted, including photographic identification for employees, that a security alarm system, both for the interior as well as exterior of the site, um, be in, in implemented, that there be a fully operational video sis surveillance system that records continuously, 24 hours a day, and that those videos be maintained for at least 45 days, which I believe when the applicant comes up, they will tell you that they actually keep them even longer than that, and that our police department have access to those should they need to. That a separate waiting area be incorporated, as well as a private consultation area that's separate from any product. That should you all approve this conditional use this evening, that it be posted in a conspicuous location inside the building. We also believe that there were, it was a necessity to make sure that these uses be separated from other uses such as schools, preschool all the way up to the college level, parks and places of worship. So that's a 500 foot distance separation that's required by code, as well as a 500, so a 500 foot separation from other dispensaries, pharmacies that are main permitted use, as well as paid management clinics that there'll be no exterior walk-up windows, that they comply with all state and federal laws, that they enter into an agreement with our police department for tr our trespass program, and that they recertify every year that these conditions are being met. And then finally, we included, should we need to, a, a, a revoc revocation <laughs> program for the, for the conditional use. Now, in looking at Knox specifically, or Fluent, as the site is actually, as the company is actually called, um, they are, they cultivate, process, and sell the cannabis products, everything from edibles to drops to capsules, topical creams, things like that. Um, you can see here we have a couple pictures of um, their point of sale floor, I guess, for lack of a better, a better um, description, because it's not really a showroom because there's no product on display. Really, you come in, there's tables if people need to sit down, knowing that people that are coming here are there for medical reasons. And then really, you just go up to the counter, the point of sale counter, and deal with whatever clerk you may be working with that afternoon. Um, very clean site. You can see from the pictures here, it's, there's minimal any, anything on display. They do have facilities here in Florida. They have 15 right now, and looking to double that in the next year. 
Um, we were able to um, go visit the North Miami Beach location. Um, they have additional locations in Miami as well. Kendall is, is opening soon. They're also located in um, Texas, Puerto Rico, and Pennsylvania. The, as I said, the petitioner's here, so I'm sure they can explain more with you about the, their actual um, process as well. Taking a step back and just looking at the overall floor plan, it's a little hard to see up here, but the, where the chairs are shown on the right-hand side, that would be the east side, the main door that you would come through, and that's the separate waiting area as well as, as the check-in counter where you would have to show any identification as well as medical information your, and as, uh, in addition to the card that you're required to have. You can see that there's a door there. It's a secure door. A staff member comes and takes you through once all the paperwork has been processed, and then you're, you're in the, um, on the sales floor there. You can see further back, there's the room, the separate room for the vault as well as for the safe, which you can see are behind two additional secure doors. And then there's, of course, other facilities in the, in the rear there. They, um, of course, will have the 24-hour video surveillance um, system, which includes facial recognition even when you come to the front door. Um, they, have, they plan to be open seven days a week. Their hours are Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and then Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Right now, they're not planning on any deliveries, which I'll touch on in a few moments in, in case they decide to change that later on, but it's not included as, as part of their business plan right now at the site. Then just stepping back one more, one more level and looking at the site overall, you can see that they are the interior um, tenant space there. From looking catty corner to the townhomes that I mentioned earlier, the building itself from the closest point of each building is about 200 feet away. And then at, at the rear, it's about 270 feet away from the building itself to the closest, to the back door of um, some of those uh, residential homes there. The site actually shares parking with the funeral home to the north. And there's more than 100 spaces for parking for both, for both those buildings. So even at adjusting from the retail use that was there before to the pharmacy use, as we would use from our code for, for parking at 1 to 200 instead of 1 to 300, they're still over parked by about 10 spaces. And again, that's for, that's for both sites. There's parking up front along University, as we have throughout University Drive with our retail. And then there's um, quite a few spaces at the rear as well. And uh, part of the application, the applicant did submit um, special purpose surveys done by a surveyor, signed and sealed, that they do meet those 500 foot distance separation requirements that I mentioned earlier. Now, as you know, when you consider conditional use, regardless of what that conditional use may be, there's three criteria which must be satisfied. The first is that the use does not negatively impact adjacent residential areas. As I mentioned, the closest residential building is approximately 200 feet away. All activities for this use will go on inside the building. There's no exterior portions of the, of the operations that will happen. That the use furthers its goals, objectives, and policy of the comp plan. This is an allowed use within the B2 <coughs> district via conditional use, and it is consistent with the intensities of other uses within this district. And finally, that all buffering requirements will be met. There are existing buffers that are out there right now. They will maintain them. They'll maintain the landscaping as needed as well. So with that, staff is recommending approval of the conditional use, CA 19003, um, with conditions A through Q, which are outlined on pages one and two of my report. The first being that the it's only for medical marijuana dispensing facility, no cultivation, no processing on site. Any future expansion has to be reviewed by staff. That includes C, if they want to implement deliveries at every, any time, staff would need to take a look at that and make sure it's appropriate for the site, and that if there were delivery vehicles to be on site, that they would not be marked in any way and that they'd be stored in the rear lot. And then conditions D through are the ones I just went through a few moments ago. Everything from no consumption on site, surveillance, things like that. And then we also added that this conditional use shall not run with the land, and it's solely for NOx servicing. So if they decide no longer to operate at this location, um, they would not be able to, to transfer that to another company. They would need to come back in if somebody else wanted to operate here and get reapproval for, through you all. And, and that you authorize the city attorney's office to draft an order approving this, this conditional use. That concludes staff's presentation. As I mentioned, the applicant is here as well, and I'm sure they have a few words Great. for you. Thank you, Julie. Yeah. Very thorough. Any questions of Julie? 
Okay. It's a quasi-judicial hearing. It's, yeah, that's been waived actually, but the, but the petitioner's coming up and then you'll open it to the public for anyone. Hi, okay. good evening. Good to see everyone. Uh, Scott Backman representing the applicant. Uh, offices are at 14 Southeast 4th Street, Boca Raton. Um, uh, it's a pleasure coming to Coral Springs, working with your staff. They do such a phenomenal job, obviously, working with them through the process and then on the presentation. Uh, I am joined tonight by Michelle Roth with Fluent. Uh, we do have a PowerPoint as well. Happy to go into a little bit more detail, uh, but I do think Julie uh, really covered just about everything, so I'll, I'll really leave that at the discretion of the commission. Uh, if, if you want Michelle to run a little bit more through some of the operations and things of that nature. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're thrilled to be here, thrilled to be processing for the first facility under the regulations that were adopted earlier this year, and we are happy to answer any questions the commission might have. Like to questions from the team? Great, thank you. Public, open to the okay. public. Okay, it's now open to the public to be heard on this item. Would anyone like to be heard on this item? By all means, come on up. Good evening. Brooke and uh, fellow city commissioners. Uh, my name's Peter Wallach. This is my wife, Martha yeah. Wallach. Uh, we're residents of the city for 43 years. Uh, we bought uh, property at 1480 uh, North University Drive in 1985. We put up a medical office building on the property in 1999, uh, 2000. Uh, we became aware of this uh, marijuana dispensary at the planning and zoning uh, meeting that was held recently. My, our, our concern is that at that meeting, it they became clear that there might be some restrictions on our ability to lease our property or sell our property at any time. Uh, the restrictions that are placed on our property are as a consequence of the marijuana dispensary being approved. If it had not been approved, these restrictions did not exist when we bought the property, nor when we put up our building. Uh, we've been paying commercial taxes here for 43 years. We've been paying residential taxes for 43 years. Uh, we would like the city commission to consider the fact that this may have a negative impact on our leasing <coughs> or sale in the future and we would like the city commission to be fair about this as they're trying to be for the potential tenant in this uh, commercial building south of us. They should be as fair for us where we see it as we're losing privileges that we're entitled to and we're losing them as a consequence of the city possibly approving this business at this location. That's what I've got to say. What's uh, next on the agenda, John? We'll see if there's any other member of the public that wants to speak, and then you can close the public hearing. I, I just want to clarify. Uh, just your name for the record. Oh, your name. Barbara Wallach. Um, I just want to clarify that because of this new business within 400 feet of our business, we do have certain restrictions that come into play that are state-governed, as well as city govern. And prior to this, we didn't have these restrictions. So again, just as my husband stated, we ask you to treat us in a fair way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else from the public that wants to be heard? You can close okay. the public hearing. We'll close the public hearing. Entertain a motion? Move to approve. Okay, there's a motion to approve by Commissioner Simmons? Uh, you want a second for discussion, anyone? Second. And then you can have discussion. I'd, well, yeah. I'd like to discuss. Second by Vice I know, Mayor. We've got to get a no, second. I have a we'll question. A discussion. Oh, you have yeah. a question. So there is no. There's no second then. There's no second. Need a second to get a discussion before a vote. If you are have questions, let's get a second so we can get into discussion. All right, then I'll second it. Okay. All right. Discussion. discussion. Uh, I just need clarification. Uh, Dr. Wallach and Ms. Wallach uh, expressed some concerns about some restrictions on the sale of a property and the leasing of property, and then also the restrictions on some privileges. Is there staff that can give clarification or? 
No, I, can, I can give a brief clarification. I know Dr. Wallach sent a, an email and it was responded to by uh, community development in my office. Um, there was no restrictions on the sale or lease of it. There's obviously restrictions. Until April, you could not have a medical marijuana facility whatsoever. We passed a law that has restrictions which are state law based, as Mrs. Wallach stated, as well as some city, for example, 500 feet, you can't have a medical marijuana facility. Or as we have to treat it like a pharmacy or any primary pharmacy, you know, over uh, within the 500 foot. But that happens all the time and, and, and uh, Obviously, this is the type of facility that we do put restrictions on it, but we call the chief of police, as well as uh, planning and zoning talked about when you have a concentration of these, there are some deleterious effects to the community. So you are entitled to public health, safety, welfare to go ahead and, and make regulations. That's what you do when you do zoning. Um, this is not taking away anything use that the, that the, the wallets currently have or anything that they have taken any action for a vested right. You will see this continue, as you remember, it's a 500 foot uh, 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 boundary that you can't be within in the other areas, and this was intentionally done, as we all recall, we showed a map of where they, these, these uh, facilities could be. So there's absolutely, uh, um, certainly no, no legal uh, issue with doing that. In fact, that's just regulating zoning. Commissioner Sarah, do you have a question of uh, Dr. Wallach? Uh, no. And, and to, to make sure we're clear, uh, 500 feet from an another, uh, another pharmacy, uh, a daycare, a place of worship, or a school. Yep. Um, that's the only restrictions as far as being within that 500 feet. Other than that, there is no, um, there is no, there is nothing outside of that of them being able to uh, sell or lease out their building for any other commercial use other than it being a place of worship, uh, a daycare, or another pharmacy. Uh, or anything else that's within our uh, 500 feet. Yeah, I mean, you know, right, the issue for, for today is, is whether you have a conditional use, is whether or not the petitioner has met those conditions, and if so, then you make your, your appropriate motion in a second uh, and, and decide to approve. If you find they haven't met the conditions, you do not do that. As so far as other people's uh, uh, interests being affected, it has nothing to do with the issue before you, nor is it an illegal uh, action that you're, that you're taking. So along those lines, John, uh, this is my first, uh, <coughs> you know, potential quasi-judicial hearing that's been waived you right. know, in a while. Well, you you've had others. To? You've had others, but they've been waived. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So, but uh, but not with uh, somebody sharing with us, you know, potentially something against it. Any long story short, can you just share with us what our duties are up here as we make a decision? Yes or no. So, so your duties are. Uh, under the ordinance that, that was passed in April, there is a conditional um, use, which means that a medical marijuana facility cannot be approved at any location unless, unless they meet the various conditions with, which Julie went through rather specifically. That's why you see the conditions are A through P, P through uh, one through six. Um, you have to uh, have found that those conditions are met. Gotcha. That's your obligation. Gotcha. Further, further yeah. discussion, Vice so Mayor. So I think you clarified it with the conversation we just had, but so he, the, he has the ability to sell a business, but just not the ones that we stated. It, exactly, uh, the, the business that, that I think the doctor currently has is, is a physician's I office. The, the public hearing is closed right now, but it's a physician's office since whenever, whatever time it is. and. Whatever that zoning allows, it allows it completely. Um, in fact, we increased the ability to do something, which was a medical marijuana facility, and that, that was limited. But uh, um, there's a 500-foot barrier, for, right? So for things that are uh, uh, for things that are pharmacies, because we have to regulate it like a, a primary pharmacy. Mm -hmm. If you're over 10,000 square feet, which this may be, and we can have those conversations, and we did have those conversations with the doctor today. I know Mr. Dunkeel, my office has met, um, and we can have conversations with him. But before you as a petitioner who's come forward with, these, uh, with this request, you have a recommendation from staff. Uh, here for you to decide. Okay, so just for clarification, we are voting that Knox Servicing has clearly met all the conditions and qualifications, and that's what we're voting on. That's what you have to decide, and if you decide that, you, you vote for it, correct? Based on what you heard from, from staff and, and uh, the petitioner. 
to walk you through the conditions. Yes, yeah, so just again, uh, what Shuli had shared with us, um, no negative impact for, adjust for adjacent residential property, residential owners, furthers the goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan and have all buffering requirements been met. Further discussion? Okay, uh, all in favor, please say aye. So you wanna do a motion to reopen the public comment? I'd like to make a motion to reopen public comment. I'll second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, you'll have oh, an opportunity. Uh, I just wanna clarify that once again, I guess you're, you're, you're deciding on whether or not to give approval uh, according to these uh, qualifications that were required. However, what's being ignored apparently was never brought up, and I noticed this at planning and zoning, that I, as a building owner and as a business adjacent, my concerns were never addressed, never thought about, never discussed, and this is my only opportunity to bring it up, and somehow I feel I'm not getting that ability here because your, your focus is being very narrowed down to approving because the criteria that were previously set have been met. So I just wanna make it clear that my opinion is that this will damage the value of my property as a building owner and I need to address it now and I still think this should be considered somehow either delay this vote and bring this up in some other manner or consider the fact that you are negatively affecting me as a business owner and as a property owner and in a unique situation you've never had a marijuana dispensary in this city uh, you don't really have anything similar to this situation in the city before and I should not suffer as a business owner as a consequence of this decision for you giving preference to this new business which is not an absolute necessity to the city and it will negatively affect me if this is approved. I think I basically summed it up. Okay. Mr. Mayor, we're still in discussion, correct? No, we are. No, we're in public hearing right now. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm, I know we had a motion on the floor. Public, public hearing, hearing is now discussion. closed again. So we're back to discussion. Thank you. Um, so uh, for, for our, more, our more seasoned commissioners here on the dais, as well as our, uh, our, our current mayor who's back again, um, you understand how difficult it is to make uh, decisions that um, you know, after you hear from residents and you know that it will impact them and you know that, uh, I, you know, I know for instance, the, the Costco was a, a really big, uh, a really big fight and a lot of residents came out to uh, voice their opposition against that. Uh, and this commission uh, plenty of times and in and, and different times have thought about the benefit to the entire city. Uh, and so, um, you know, I, I understand uh, the doctors uh, comments and I understand his uh, his arguments uh, very well. It's not falling on deaf ears. Uh, however, uh, at what point you know do we do we uh, lead or what, at what point do we continue to uh, continue to not do what's in the best interest of the entire city? Uh, these are very stringent requirements that uh, this company has met. Uh, this is not something that was uh, simply done. Uh, this was not something that was done in the dark. Uh, we've had multiple workshops. We've had uh, uh, city, uh, you know, city surveys and, and different things like that. Uh, and it's also important to note that this is, this is potentially the issue that the doctor is saying that would harm him is for a potential, if maybe future, selling of his medical facility or his uh, medical building. Uh, there is no current plans to sell it to anything or to turn it into anything else. It's just he's saying if 20, 25 years from now or 30 years from now, he would like to uh, sell that building, um, that it would, that at that point it could negatively impact what he would like to do with that property. Uh, so uh, we had the courage to make this vote back in 
uh, back in, uh, I, don't, I can't remember the month, but we had the courage to April make that 3rd. vote. April 3rd. Uh, and uh, we owe it to the residents that were very supportive of this, overwhelmingly supportive of this, uh, to see this through. That's all I'll say. Any further discussion? Yes, Commissioner Vignola. I just think. Um, Dr. Wallach, if you'd please sit down. Oh, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> A couple things. One, um, Dr. Wallach, um, I did consider, and I, and I brought it up when this did pass, on how this could negatively affect other adjacent businesses um, and other areas of the community. Um, uh, I, I considered it, I can tell you that. Um, as, as far as him selling the business 20, 30 years from now, uh, judging by the looks on, on Dr. Wallach and his uh, wife's face, I, I think they're gonna be selling that before 20 or 30 years from now. Um, and uh, I guess I'll, I'll leave that at that. Any further discussion? Okay, we'll Thank do a roll call. Vote. I'd like to make a comment. Yes. Um, I, I'm not included, I'm assuming, in the seasoned commission. But it is our responsibility to hear every voice of our constituents. And if the Walk family is coming forward and they're expressing concern and I have questions, it doesn't mean that one of us doesn't have the courage to make the right decision or the wrong decision or whatever. In, in the end, we are here to represent every resident. So I just wanted to be clear because I know that there was a comment there and we have a family that's here that owns the business. They've been in the, in the community for 40 plus years. And I feel compelled to ask some questions to get clarification. Even though I knew the answer, I wanted to make sure that I put it on the record and then move forward. And please don't, yes. please don't take my comments as me uh, discrediting them coming forward. Because, I mean, they took time out of their evening to come here and speak on behalf of their property. No, that's extremely important. I would never... Um, I would never take that lightly or dismiss it uh, as such. Uh, so please don't take my comments that way. Uh, I think I was speaking more of the fact that we have to keep that global view that we had originally uh, when we even sought to uh, come up with these regulations and, and go forward and approve them twice. So uh, that's what my comments were more aimed at, not necessarily uh, directed personally at this family that has taken time out of their very busy schedules to come here. So, uh, you know, to address uh, <coughs> Dr. Wallach and uh, Barbara, we have listened and we actually have listened some more. Uh, we don't usually reopen public comment again. I'm not sure how we're going to vote. Come in. I'll still call on you. It's discussion. I can discuss too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how we're going to vote, uh, but you can always rest assured we will always listen. Each of the five of us and all of us as a team, we will always listen. And we had a motion to move public comment to be reopened, it was unanimous. So we heard you another time. I'm still listening. I'm sorry, yeah, public comment is over. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is the realtor in me speaking. This medical marijuana is new territory for all of us and um, can't say that it's comfortable, but you know, the world changes all the time, and I think that it has the potential to bring in different uses that would not conflict with the medical marijuana business, but perhaps complement it in areas that none of us have even considered because it's new territory. And um, the fact that the building still can be sold, except for maybe a couple of uses that would conflict with the medical marijuana, I still think there's a world of possibilities out there where people would be happy to be in your location. Those are my thoughts, Mr. Mayor. Further discussion? <coughs> okay, we're still gonna do a roll call vote. We'll start with the Vice Mayor. Yes. Commissioner Simmons. Yes. Commissioner Vignola. No. Commissioner Serra. No. Mayor Brooks. Yes. Passes three to two. Next is consent agenda. Are there any polls? Move consent. Consent is moved. Second. Seconded. Any discussion on consent? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries unanimously. Next is commissioner communications. Who'd like to go first? I'll go first. Okay, commissioner. Uh, First, I want to say thank you to all the staff for uh, 
these last two days. I know we're not done, but uh, I appreciate your um, I appreciate your uh, you know willingness to work with us to engage in, in discussions with us uh, and really give it that team environment. Uh, some of the work we did actually when I left today, I felt really uh, encouraged and, and and enthused by the amount of um, you know involvement from everybody that has been in the room. Uh, I know you all have a have a lot more to do than necessarily us, uh, but I know we'll see you all again tomorrow uh, <laughs> afternoon. Uh, but I, I am very grateful for uh, your comments and, and being responsive and kind of helping us think through uh, some of the ideas and, and plans that we have uh, for the city. Uh, the second thing I would like to say is um, on a bit more personal note, you know, I was talking with my mother uh, who recent, recently just got to her last uh, duty station in San Antonio, I guess for the people from uh, Texas, I should say San Antonio. Um, thank you, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, you know, she mentioned to me that uh, she can't often tell me where she's going or what she's doing. Um, she is in the Navy. Uh, she will be having to travel to another city uh, in a couple of weeks uh, to help uh, prepare uh, members of the uh, uh, Navy medical team to deploy to Iraq. Uh, and you know, and, and she talked about some of her frustrations because, you know, as a member of the military, you can't necessarily voice your opinions in the public sphere like most of us can because you will be, you will be in direct violation of your duty and what you uh, signed up for when you become a member of uh, the United States uh, Armed Services. And what I got from that conversation wasn't her ranting and rave, raving. She wasn't necessarily complaining. What she was showing was fidelity to her fellow uh, member of the armed services as far as, you know, when we see headlines about what's happening in uh, different parts of the world uh, and the talking heads on the news uh, discuss the merits of what our um, government officials are doing in DC, uh, that the direct result of those decisions are regular hardworking uh, people who have signed up to uh, protect their families, to protect their neighborhoods, to protect their cities, uh, and to protect their country. Uh, and so I just want you all to always remember that, yeah, we see these headlines and these bylines and these stories that are sensationalized, but at the root of all of those are the, the result of all of those stories and bylines are men and women who are being sent into uh, these dangerous situations uh, who may or may not come home. And, you know, my mom is, um, I will not give away her age because she will kill me, uh, but uh, she is going to have to go work with 19 year olds and 20 year olds and she spent much of her, um, most of her 20 years in the services uh, mentoring these kids as they come into uh, uh, the Navy and, and different um, branches. Uh, and that, you know, she was just really sad and that the fact that, you know, she's, ha she's gonna have to pray for these 19 year olds who will go over there and they may or may not come back or if they do go, maybe they don't come back quite the same way as when they left. And so, um, you know, just always please remember that, um, you know, we do have some incredible people who have given their time, their life, their energy uh, to make sure that we continue to have a, a safe country and a, a, a proud country. So, um, you know, just always keep the men and women of our armed, armed forces in your, in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, I believe you and I, maybe the others also received a request from a resident to consider, and we'll probably have to workshop this, uh, renaming the Mullins Pool to Nicholas Duet. Yes. Okay, so if we could get that workshop for a discussion, I would appreciate that. By me? Um, okay, yes, workshop on that. Okay, and lastly, I am the Broward League of Cities main liaison, and we are currently working on um, future, uh, actually the next 50 to 75 year destiny for our future of garbage and trash. And um, You wanna talk trash? It's good, yeah, I wanna talk trash. This is planned to be about a four year process and um, I don't want to be assumptive and just assume because I'm the BLC liaison that that's my job, I'm taking over, and because there's going to be um, eight people who are designated, and when I saw the proposals, the city of Coral Springs fell into category one or category two, so it's very, very likely that our city will be one of those eight people. 
but then there's a working group underneath that, and then there's a technical group underneath that. The technical is likely city staff from the various cities that are involved. So is there, a, we're going to need an alternate, but is there anyone else here that has the passion to attend multiple meetings and be the liaison besides me? No, we don't know when. We don't know anything yet. <laughs> I might be interested. Okay. It so, really depends on the meeting. Okay. I mean, I can take the lead. I just didn't want to be a sum div. I appreciate that. So. You're welcome. Okay. Well, I'll keep you apprised of how this plays out. And um, I believe November 15th is going to be the next decision for the, you know, who's going to represent. So I'll keep you posted. And, and we'll also need an alternate then. So yes, I will need an alternate. Lead, does someone want to be an alternate? I think you are the alternate think, currently for Briarland. Well, for this for this project, and you can be it. This you is a big project. <laughs> Keep it the same. Well, I, I can't do it because it'd be a conflict for me. But um, I didn't know we were doing this based off of Briarland League of Cities. I think anybody can. Well, it's being run through VLC, um, through the thirty-one municipality. Oh, well, not me. Uh, Works for me. Okay, with you guys. Yep, so there's our alternate. Okay. Thank you. That's great. So for the month of no uh, October, <laughs> got to remember where I am, my office hours are on the 28th from 4 to 5 p.m. And anytime you have a question or a concern and I can be of assistance, I'm at 954-998-4186 or joy carter at coralsprings.org. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Vignola. Um, <coughs> a couple events coming up. We have the uh, City Haunted House. It's a non-scary haunted house. It's age appropriate through fifth grade. Um, there'll be bounce houses and slides. Also have a themed room for the youngest visitors. Uh, Trick-or-treaters will get their share of candy as they leave. Um, it'll be at the Coral Swing Gymnasium Friday, October 25th um, from 5 to 7.30. And then again, Saturday, October 26th from 2 to 7 p.m. Um, if you're going to be over there on Saturday, I would advise you to go over to uh, Fire Station 80. Um, where we'll have the Cancer Awareness Pasta Dinner from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's at 2825 Coral Springs Drive. Um, the event's open to the public and for a $5 donation. Everyone will receive a generous portion of pasta, salad, bread, and beverage. All food is made and served by our firefighters, including our very own chief, uh, Frank Babnick, who I believe makes the sauce. Um, the uh, proceeds will benefit the American Cancer Society, the Lisa Bocard Breast Cancer Fund, and the Coral Springs Professional Firefighters Benevolent Association. Um, kind of sticking with firefighters. I know we had our meeting earlier today, and I, I got a text. I'm, for those that don't know, I, I just kind of gave up on Facebook a few years ago. Um, it's just not my thing. Um, and I guess if you don't have to run for re-election, you don't have to do it. Um, but I still get texts once in a while, even though Facebook's not even on my phone. And um, I didn't check my phone earlier when I had it, but I got a text from Facebook that reminded me to wish uh, Mike Matnack a happy birthday today. Oh, wow. um, so Mike, happy birthday. Um, and then also I know the mayor had uh, mentioned it um, earlier that next week will mark uh, one year since the passing of our mayor, Sue Campbell. Um, if anyone wants to reach me, uh, please call me on my cell phone at 954-632-7544. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Sarah. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just wanted to congratulate all the restaurants that are participating and savor the Springs Restaurant Week. We started this past Saturday. We have it through Sunday. I want to congratulate uh, our great partner for their celebration of 35 years. Runyon's had the pleasure of talking to Kevin yesterday and uh, her day had a great event. And there are a lot of restaurants participating. A special shout out to Pete's Place because of their uh, Terravella High School connection. Um, speaking of garbage, I have to throw out a shout out to Hugh Burrell, he is our garbage driver technician in our neighborhood. He's been servicing us for three and a half years. He works for Waste Pro, and he's more than a garbage uh, driver. He's someone that takes great pride in not only his work, but in this city that he serves. So I want to thank you for uh, being the man. All of our uh, neighbors on our street love this guy. I mean, if for something falls out of the garbage truck, he actually stops the truck, gets out of the truck, and puts it in, which you don't regularly see. Uh, I had the pleasure of uh, being trained a couple of weeks ago for my IEMO compliance, and I wanted to come back and just thank 
our uh, city manager, our city attorney, our city staff, our city clerk, uh, and my fellow colleagues, because uh, sitting in a room with uh, 40 newly elected officials and hearing some of the horror stories <laughs> that they are experiencing in their city. I kind of sat back and I think they thought that I was kind of pretty boring. Um, <laughs> but at the end, I just had to give a shout out to our city because a lot of the issues that a lot of cities are dealing with, we are not dealing with in Coral Springs. And I wanted our residents to hear that because uh, there's a lot of ideas and opinions on what could be better or improved on, but uh, we should be very proud of the city we live in. And uh, I'm looking forward to serving the next three years to try to improve it if that's possible. Uh, I wanna thank my colleagues and staff for the past couple of days. I thought it's been very insightful. I'm excited about the next five, 10, 15 years of Coral Springs. I agree with Commissioner Simmons' comments. Uh, it's exciting time for Coral Springs and a lot of uh, opportunity to grow and, and get better. And my last uh, comment is if you're interested in getting in touch with me, I don't have uh, designated office hours, but you can reach me on my cell, which is 954-612-7114. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I have a few things. Uh, main, first thing I wanna share is just to invite everybody to join us for the Veterans Day ceremony. It is on November 11th, 11, 11 at 10 a.m. Um, and it's a great ceremony. It's a great way to honor our veterans and pay them the respect that is due them. Uh, a lot of times it's not quite as well attended as I'd like it to be. I'm um, hopeful that we'll all be able to be there and uh, bring our families. It's a great way to say thank you uh, directly into someone's face. And uh, the veterans that attend, uh, they really appreciate it. Uh, later that night, um, a few fellows and I and the Students United Network, we were able to enroll Paragon Theaters uh, to support Mission Zero and the Veterans Coalition of Coral Springs where proceeds will go to benefit those two veterans organizations. Uh, Mission Zero, if you would recall, Jose Belen came to us and they're committed to having zero suicides for our veterans. Uh, so join us later that evening at Paragon Theaters and. I'll share more details uh, down the road as I have them. Uh, along the lines of uh, you know, supporting somebody that served us um, and somewhat tagging on to what Commissioner Simmons was sharing about keeping the military in our thoughts and our prayers um, for they protect our freedoms. Uh, there was a, a young man that lived here um, and I was remiss when I was mayor the first time uh, not asking to recognize him and I apologize to his family for that, and I'm asking my colleagues tonight uh, to proclaim a day in um, Specialist Daniel Agami's honor. So I'd like to share a little bit of information about Daniel. Uh, his mom reached out to me recently and asked if we could recognize him. So uh, Daniel Agami was 25, actually, I'm sorry, of Coconut Creek. Uh, he died uh, June 21 from injuries that he suffered, unfortunately, when the IED detonated near his vehicle in Baghdad. Agami and others killed were assigned to the 1st Battalion, 26th Infantry Regiment, 2nd Brigade Combat Team, 1st Infantry Division, based in Germany. He was quoted in a Newsweek magazine article in April about Adamiya, one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in Baghdad. He told the magazine an army plan to put more soldiers on foot patrol in the capital would leave troops more vulnerable to attack. When he was on a recent visit home, at that time he had faced bloody battles with insurgents. He said, quote, I go on daily or nightly missions raiding Iraqi homes to find weapons and bombs. The deaths of my friends have been traumatic. I lost six of my closest friends. America fights for freedom and survival for the souls of the entire world. Unfortunately, uh, he died in battle um, and his parents were presented with a Purple Heart, Bronze Star, and an Army Commendation Medal. And, and I don't recall exactly his ties to Coral Springs. I believe there were some, uh, but even if he did not live here, I would like this city uh, to recognize him and thank him and his family for the ultimate sacrifice and a proclaim a day in his honor in the future. Mission? Um, I believe he lived in Coral Springs for a while. He was a friend of mine when we were kids. Uh, we went to school together. Um, Coconut Creek did a recognition of him. A few years ago, I was there with a, a 
bunch of my friends from high school, but yeah, I'm, I'm good to go with this, obviously. I mean, um, he, was a, he was a good person. He really was. I didn't know he was a friend of yours. Okay, we have approval for that. I appreciate that. Uh, I also want to thank my colleagues and our team for wonderful strategic planning uh, over the last two days. I think we've uh, got a lot of great ideas that we've uh, culled through many more. Uh, looking forward to exactly how that plays out. And I also want to thank the choice of the facilitator, Lyle. thought he uh, did an excellent job facilitating us. I'm very proud to be a member of this team. Uh, I think you guys and Gal are awesome. Uh, it's an honor to serve with you and uh, everybody here at the city. Uh, really, really, I thank you uh, so much for your commitment to the city and uh, being part of the great team that we are. Uh, I'd like us to have a discussion, a workshop, do something uh, other than what we're doing about vaping uh, and not necessarily just accept that vaping goes on in our schools uh, of illegal substances. Uh, probably should have brought it up during strategic planning, uh, but I think it is a, uh, it's a, it's a great problem and it can pose an even greater problem in the future. So if that's something that we could workshop down the road, I would appreciate it. Vice Mayor? <laughs> At Broward League of Cities, they, um, I forgot what city it is that's getting ready to write a resolution. I want to say it was Pembroke Pines and they were going to share it with us. So you might want to wait on that but they said it should be shortly. Is I'll that get this. I'll look into that if you want. And okay. We can I thought discuss. it was Pembroke Pines. And then you can bring it back to us. Sure. It was from the meeting we had in Deerfield a couple weeks ago. Great. Uh, there are a couple other things. So I get these uh, emails and yeah, I get to them as fast as I can. And there are a few that were shared with you. Uh, one of them is to recognize October 24th, I guess, and in, in mentioned by us as World Polio Day. We're not necessarily going to be able to do anything other than what we're doing here because our next meeting will come after October 24th. Uh, but maybe we can recognize Rotary's good work after October 24th and give them recognition at a subsequent meeting, if that's okay with you all. Okay, I've got at least two, three, four, great. Uh, I've been asked to do a later letter of support for the investment tax credit. Um, you'll see there was an email that was forwarded by Randy on October 3rd seeking our support of the important renewable energy policy. So if I could have your support for that, I would appreciate that. Sure. The only comment that I had, which I think it's great, but you know, there's always two sides. There's FPNL and then there's solar, so which I'm a fan of solar, but I always thought like we should have the other side, you know, what is what is their opinion of a pro or a con before we dive in and say just one let's, side? Let's take a look at that. Absolutely. Thank you. <coughs> and then another proclamation I've been asked to do is to join Extra Mile Day. Uh, 553 cities have declared Extra Mile Day and recognize individuals and organizations in their local community who created positive change by going the extra mile. So again, November 1st would be too soon and maybe in the next commission meeting in November uh, or the second one, we could seek to recognize people in our community and maybe our staff that have gone the extra mile. And if you need more time to look at it, I know uh, that's fine, but if that's okay with you guys, I'd like to do that. Is that, that's similar to what we do, I think, what internally, internally as what the bright spot, I think, right? And then every year, what, do we, what is the event that we have when we, um, and I forgot what it's called when we Lynn honor Johnson all the students. Award. Yeah, well, yeah, the Lynn Johnson, which is a volunteer one, and then as and then the student one too as well, right? The silver is it not silver? What is it? Um, shine on. Yeah, yeah that, shine. that's really incorporated in our shine on with the students. Absolutely, that's. So I mean, I'm not sure, because I mean, I think we actually as a city do a, a remarkable job year round of recognizing individuals who go above and beyond every day. I think, I mean, if you, I think since you've been here, we probably recognize, you know, citizens from the community that have went the extra mile already. So I'm not sure if we need to do something additional to what we're already doing as a city. Well, I would ask you guys to take a look at this, whether or not you've had a chance to again. I hate to say that, yeah, we didn't want to recognize uh, the extra mile day at all. Uh, so, and I, don't really want to have even two nays, even if I got two more yeses. So I would just ask to take another look at it, and I'm going to bring it back at the uh, first meeting in November, which would be November 6th, 
which I'll be away, but I'll be appearing by phone. So this will come to your dais again. I think, oh, and then the last one comes from Sandra Bernard Bastien uh, for a possible partnership with Broward Aware. Have you had a chance to look at that? Then I'm gonna I'm gonna raise that November 6th. Yep, because it, what it, just so that you know, when I receive these by emails, I ask Randy to immediately forward them to you all. So I have another 200 emails to catch up on. So I don't expect you guys to necessarily have looked at it between then and now. So if you haven't, I'd rather give you guys the time and let's talk about it at the next meeting. Uh, Bruhaha is a party coming up this Friday night at the museum. I uh, hope you guys will join me over there. I'll be there uh, celebrating uh, some beer fest. <laughs> uh, and my office hours are typically on Fridays. You can call Randy at 344-5906 to get a reservation. You can also call me on a cell phone, not at any time, but a lot of the time, 696-7599. And that's all I have. We're up to you, city manager. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to thank the commission for all the time that you've invested this week. This is our full-time job. You all have full-time jobs and then you, you're you on 13 hours <laughs> at, uh, and counting right now wow. for today and then a full day yesterday and then you have time tomorrow. But it makes a huge difference for us to develop our plans for the future and want to thank you for uh, your sacrifice and committing so much time to do it. That's all I have. Welcome. Okay, city attorney. Thank you, Mayor. Just as a follow-up, we discussed the opioid litigation. As you know, there, we spoke about the many lawsuits that have been filed. They've been consolidated in Ohio, uh, many class actions. Uh, we've looked into it, our, my office, Sherry Whitaker and I, and there, there's certainly an advantage to filing this suit in the Southern District of Florida. We'll be transferred up to uh, Ohio. I think it's the Northern District of Ohio Federal Court. So I would just ask for a motion to approve us engaging uh, some of the class action litigation attorneys. We have a couple different options. They've all have been approved by the Northern District of Ohio Court. We wanna have someone monitoring on behalf of the city, just in case there's an advantage to uh, either opting out or not opting out. We would want someone that's looking at that day to day, not not us down here that, that have no uh, Makes sense. Uh, venue. And so if I could get a motion to uh, authorize city attorney's office to enter into a um, an agreement with one of the authorized law firms um, and I remind you, it's on a contingency basis, so there's there's no cash out from us other than cost, which would be very minimal. I'll move. Second. Discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Carries unanimously. Thank you, and that's all I have. All right. Thank you very much. We are adjourned.